Welcome back, everybody, to another Factorial Friday Facts discussion number 405, whole belt reader, new logistics GUI, and some other stuff as well. I'm Exterminator, and thank you for joining me this week again. And we have quite a lot of quality of life stuff today. So I know the last several were quality of life. I think we are building up to another big content one, probably a planet reveal in a couple weeks here, uh, which I'm, I'm really hopeful for. So, But until then, we are still getting some really good things. So let's just hop right into it. So the whole belt reader. So currently in 1.0, you know, you can read sections of a belt at a time, like one tile of a belt at a time. And you can like connect them all if you want to read, you know, like a whole section together, but it's kind of tedious. It doesn't look great. And you can kind of see an example here. It's ugly, inefficient, tedious, obscures the items on the belts and doesn't work for underground belts, right? So they decided to make it work nicer. Boskid added a new mode you can choose when selecting the read belt contents mode. And you can see, uh, so read belt contents. So there's that. And then I'm actually not seeing the option, uh, but hold, oh, I guess all belts. Okay, hold all belts. So uh, it will read all the belts in the same transport line is a belt being read. It survives going through underground belts, but is broken at splitters and side loading of another belt, which is a very common thing. Like generally they, you know, in, in other instances, they consider it a break when it hits a splitter or a side loading. And this is what it looks like. And honestly, this looks really good. I, I, I actually feel like I would maybe want to just circuit a hookup circuits to all of my belts and do nothing with it because it looks so amazing. And, and like, I actually think it looks potentially better than the normal belt because it has the rails. It actually makes a little more sense to me on it. Uh, so I, I, I can definitely see myself and, and others just hooking the whole thing up. Now, obviously at scale, this would probably cause some performance issues, but uh, overall it looks really good and the feature is really, really great. I can see some, some really, really cool things happening with this that the people experiment with. So the result is not only way more convenient, but it also looks uh, better with less visual clutter, which is kind of what we just said. So that's that really nice small thing, but I think will be pretty useful. And then faster subsequent rocket launches. Now this is a pretty big one uh, for me. So in late game, you can craft and compare, uh, prepare, sorry, rockets pretty fast, but there was always a throughput bottleneck. Uh, the beautifully crafted animations take a long time. So how it is now for anyone who doesn't know, exactly you, you basically you cannot actually launch a rocket in a minute like even if you speed module it as fast as it can go and stuff it at least with productivity which you would basically always want to put in there uh, it takes slightly longer than a minute to it for it to actually from from when it starts building to when it actually launch like leaves and, and and like gives you the science it takes longer than a minute due to the animation right so this is why like if you're doing 10k science a minute you actually need like 11 or 12 silos, because if you do 10, it won't actually generate 10,000 space science a minute uh, for, for that reason. But anyway, just a little background there if you didn't know. So they didn't really want to increase the animation speed as it might look a bit weird, which I agree, so I'm glad they didn't do that, but they figured out a compromise, which I think is a really good one. The rocket silo can craft and buffer an extra rocket inside. So after launching, if there's a uh, buffered rocket, the door closing opening sequence is skipped, which is really nice. It's not something that is jarring or anything. You can see here on the right is the kind of fixed one where the door doesn't open and close. It was kind of pointless before. Uh, I mean, I guess they're both like that. But uh, so yeah, it just kind of starts, you know, sending the rocket up for launch as soon as the other one has left, you don't bother with the doors opening and closing. So I would assume this now means that you can actually launch a rocket, you can see it's all fully beacon to uh, in a minute or less uh, because they shorten that animation which is pretty sweet now we do notice some changes here now this is nothing super new because they did mention this in a previous friday fax uh, but they did change the recipe for the rocket because you'll be launching a lot more of them to spill, build your space platforms and get materials back and forth and stuff but you can see it takes lds still rocket fuel but they took out rocket control units from being built uh sorry going into the silos make rockets and instead you just skip blue circuits and they also greatly reduce the cost of the rockets as well i forget the exact cost but it's like a tenth of the price now just in 2.0 as it is now because you'll be launching way less of them uh, so that's just 
kind of something to know if you didn't read that or hear that in the previous in another Friday Facts. It takes blue circuits in 2.0, not rocket control units. So this means a throughput of a single rock style is more than doubled. And this is also super important for space age where you send a lot more rockets. So yeah, this is this is awesome. Another great one, pump filters. So technically, I guess this was already a thing uh, that was possible, but they didn't add a GUI yet, but they have, of course, for 2.0. So it can be, be annoying if you get some trains mixed up and they pump a whole bunch of lubricant into your crude oil inputs. Uh, yeah, for sure. So you can actually now add filters, which is awesome. So basically this will like, it works just as, you know, another any, any other filter where it just won't work unless that liquid you filter for is going through it, which I can be, I can see so many use cases with this. I can see some really clever and, and honestly quite crazy things happening with, uh, you know, mixed pumps or sorry, mixed pipes. And then you can control it as well with a surrogate network, which is an even bigger thing. So I can see doing like maybe one liquid drop off for all liquids. And then basically it just changes its filter based on the train that's in the station perhaps. Because uh, you should be able to read the train and then know the liquid and you could change the filter. And then you only need one station to drop off your liquids. That's just something off the top of my head. Uh, but I'm sure there's a ton of other ways this could be useful. And, and I really, really like this. So sushi belts, anyone? <laughs> or sushi pipes? Uh, no, thank you. But I, I do think there can be some pretty creative things that happen with this. And then the biggest thing is a new Logistic Networks GUI. So the Logistic Network GUI was added back in 015 and had only cosmetic changes from there onwards. So this is the first release of it. It does look slightly better now just because all the GUIs look better. But uh, basically, this the functionality is remained the same throughout all that time. And if you didn't know, and I think a lot of people did not know, because Will and I actually discussed this on one of his streams during one of, uh, I think, the latest 2.0 sim episode, and a lot of people don't know this. If you press L, this is this is current, by the way. This is since it was in, in since zero fifteen. This is not a two point thing. This is now. Uh, if you press L, it will open the logistics network logistic network GUI, and basically it looks generally like this. So you can select the network with a drop off. It's not very descriptive at all, though. It's just a network number and then the amount of cells, which is based on the row reports. Contents tab, two column list showing the items of the network. Members tab, a two column list showing the members of the network, a search bar uh, for searching in the selected tab. While functional, the GUI was not used very much and left a lot to be desired. And that was a discussion we had. It's not very useful at all, at least in our opinion right now. And a lot of people don't even know about it. I use it maybe, I don't know, once every like five playthroughs. <laughs> I basically never use it, very rarely but they are redoing it and I think it's significantly better. So I don't know if they heard it. That I, I think it's a coincidence that we talked about it and now it's a thing because that, that's like pretty quick for them to have done this because we just talked about that like last weekend. So I, or not last weekend, but last week, sorry. Uh, I, I don't think they just heard that and implemented it. I, I think it's a coincidence, uh, but maybe not. Uh, the new trains overview GUI was a winning formula in my book, so let's just try to copy it. So you can check out the Friday Facts where they went over that, and I have a video, of course, on that as well. So a list on the side of category, categorize things at mini maps to give specific information about each individual related item. So this is pretty interesting. Now, there are multiple iterations of this, and I do like the final one that we'll look at, but I think there's some stuff that they should maybe keep from some, some of these earlier ones. So... Looking at this, first off, it obviously looks way better. I love the fact that there's mini maps with each thing. However, I I think so, so later on, spoiler alert, but later on, uh, basically, Clona decides that that he doesn't want uh, each item thing, each item category to have a mini map thing because, you know, he says it doesn't seem very useful. But I actually disagree. I, I think this is fantastic. I would love this to be brought back into their final iteration because I think part of the reason you would want to use this menu is to find items in your network. Like sure, you can see that they are in existence in your network, but I want to know where they are <laughs> because uh, that there's no other way to do that, right? Like you could request it, I suppose, but that still doesn't really help you know where it's from. It just helps to bring it to you, which may not be ideal. So I think this is something that should actually be kept 
uh, that's just my opinion but i would love to hear what you guys think with this part um overall though i think it looks way better i love the fact that they do have the mini maps with it but there was a big problem that was being avoided which is the network selection that drop down solution is bad for a few reasons uh, you can't identify the networks in a drop down the only information to go on is the number of cells so that remained the same in the first iteration which is not great it takes extra tedious clicks to change the network so finding the network you want takes even longer so we go to iteration two here i tried to tackle the network selection the first step was to change from a drop down to a list instantly better the second step was to add the icon in front to differentiate the mobile and uh, robo port network so we're getting somewhere okay so when you go in, when you when you open the logistics menu, you are presented with this menu first, right? And then you would select, and it even shows like your spider tron. You select the network, and then once you're in there, you would then get a menu that looks like this. But the biggest problem is still identifying the networks, right? Because sure, you know all these are ones in your base, but you really don't know which they are because they're just numbered. My conclusion was that basically the only way to identify a network is by looking at it. So I added the selected network minimap. This starts to get there. I can quickly go through the networks on the list and visually identify the networks with the minimap. However, the GUI starts to look like a monster. You know, there's two lists to fill some space. I need to add some random network information and so many minimaps. So you can see though, kind of what this would look like is when you select a network, it will show you a map of it ish, but I would imagine some are like kind of right next to each other. Well, pretty, well, pretty much all of them will be right next to each other. So, so this is definitely better. I can see this maybe still being a little confusing, but it's absolutely better than nothing. And there is, you know, some stats in here too. So after some testing, I determined that the individual item mini maps were not proving to be that useful. With that in mind, I could change things around. Uh, the iteration centered on the idea that the list of items was not so useful with logistic networks. You generally don't care where the items are. You only care if there is enough in the system, which is the part that I kind of fundamentally disagree with. Like, I absolutely agree that you want to make sure there's enough and you want to know there's enough, but you can pretty much already do that just by looking, mousing over a logistic chest. Like, I know it, like, drops off, you know, the screen on, on the right-hand side, uh, but by that point, the like, that point, unless you're playing modded, but aside from modded in vanilla, like, even in 2.0, by the time it starts dropping off the screen, it's, like, such a low numbers because it's sorted by count. Uh, by quantity of item by the time it drops off you know you're down in like barely you're down to like double digits which is usually not super important at that point i want to know where the item is right like if i have uh you, you know i don't know maybe i want to see like if i have some shields left or something and i mean you could request them but you get my point right like a lot of times i want to know where the item is in the network I, I can pretty simply already see that I have enough just my mousing over logistic chest. So this part I do disagree with. I think that that should be brought back from these other two iterations is the mini map things for the uh, individual items. I'd like again to hear what you guys think with that and let them know as well on the forum and stuff. Even if you disagree with me, if you agree with them, that's totally fine. Always give their feedback, give them your feedback. So I removed the list of items and added a generic table of icons. This means we can cram a lot more of them on screen. So you can see here, this is now what you get, which is good, uh, but it's basically just a copy of what you would get when you mouse over the, uh, when you mouse over logistic chess, right? Which is what I was saying. Obviously it doesn't drop off the screen, which is great. <laughs> That's a huge improvement. But again, like I can pretty much already see this info without even going into this menu. So my reason for going into this menu is still kind of like null in, in my opinion, based on this iteration. So after using it for a while, I realized that this is the way to go. There were just some tweaks needed. It is oddly out of proportion. The minimap is rectangular. The table of items is too wide. So we get to the final, I believe it is, iteration. Uh, there's an obvious improvement. We move the items to the side. This gives us more height, which means we can make the minimap square and bigger. The second improvement came from an insight from using the last GUI. The number of members is generally pretty small, five to ten at most. So the members tab was often uh, really empty looking when compared to how much space the item tabs reserve. So then there isn't really much point in having them in the tabs, right? So we can always show both because it's really unlikely the members will become too big for us to handle nicely. So you can see here, again, looks great. There's a scroll bar, which is which is awesome. But basically, I would still like, I would still say for me, this is pretty much 
not going to be used very much. And here's my reason. Now, again, I, I really don't like giving negative feedback. I have like essentially every single thing the devs have done. I don't want this, you know, to, to sound too negative if the, if the devs watch this or anything, uh, guys, but essentially like it looks way better. It operates way better. I love that. But for me, it, it basically just does the same thing as if I just mouse over logistic chess, right? Because since they since the functionality to click on an item and see where it is was taken away, this is literally the same exact thing you get when you mouse over a logistic chest. Now, granted, you can see like this map and such, which is great. And you know, you can select the network and it will show you specifically per network what items are in there. So that is helpful, I will agree. So it kind of does narrow down where things are, uh, which I guess is maybe close enough, but I still think like, what would be great? I don't know if this is possible, but my ideal solution would be keep this as it is. I really like this final iteration for what it does, but then allow me to click on items in here and it just opens a mini map, like just this again, basically, but specifically for the item, right? So like if, if I clicked on say explosive rockets, right? It would basically just bring me to a full mini map of explosive rockets where they are like this is. So it'd be like a blown up version of one of these, right? And that would basically do every single thing that I wanted to do and I would use it way more. That's just my opinion. Maybe I'm just weird or off base here, but uh, oh, I like it's not bad. Like none of this is bad. This is all improvements, this is all great. But I do think that uh, maybe they dumbed it down or, or maybe not, that's the right wording, but kind of took away something that should have been in this final iteration uh, because yeah, I already explained that. Anyway, moving on, integration with remote view. Uh, however, the GUI still had a problem. It is that it was a real GUI. It covered the whole screen and the main map didn't allow any of the normal map interaction. So the final part that they did was to make it a glued on remote view panel. This allows us to keep all the normal GUI such as quick bar and inventory visible, allow you to build and modify things normally and logistics GUI provides logistic information, right? So that's really nice. It doesn't consume the entire screen. It still allows this stuff it, and such like that, which is really nice. And that's our Friday facts. Really great stuff overall. Like I said, nothing bad at all. Uh, nothing that I'm unhappy with because like this still is better and does more things than the current version. Uh, but yeah, I already explained my complaints multiple times with uh, or my issues with this. So I'd love to hear your thoughts below as always, everyone. And uh, thank you so much for watching and leave your thoughts for the devs too, you know, on the forums and the Reddit, uh, you know, that's, you know, they ask for the feedback, definitely uh, give it to them there, of course, uh, nicely. And if you did enjoy, a like is appreciated, of course. And if you are new, welcome and feel free to subscribe if you are already to keep up with future content. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.